Hey guys, what's up, Dragonfly Jake? And today I'm here to discuss how to possibly die less in Player Unknown's battle rounds. And I hope these tips and sort of analysis of some of my wins here um, can show you just how to put yourself in the best place as to die less. Because let me give you the one thing. I sound like Ty Lopez here. The one investment strategy, knowledge here in my garage. No, no, no. let me give you the one concept it takes to die less. And you may already know this, and after I explain it, if you already know it and you don't care to see the analysis of how I've applied it to these couple of wins, I actually got three wins in a row last night with my brother and some duo first persons. And I'll show you those in a little bit here, um, at least a couple of them. Anyways, that one concept is simply all the time, especially towards the end, especially towards those end moments where it's getting close to the win, putting yourself in the least bad position. Now, I know I should probably just say put yourself in the best position, but generally you're always you're always thinking to yourself, man, this place sucks. I've got no cover. Or man, they've got the upper high ground here. Or man, I've got to run so far to the circle. So that's why I say least bad place because they're all bad places, let's be honest. You need to just, just you need to just go to the least bad place. So, it's simply all the time PUBG is a there's going to be games where you're going you you had zero chance of winning like not zero but like they even if they're a way worse player they're going to be hiding behind a rock and you've got to sprint dead across a completely empty field and they're just going to kill you right because they've got a four time scope you didn't happen to find one all you've got some stupid hollow scope on your uh mp or your ump you know it's it sucks right some those games happen um and what you got to do in these scenarios is just you've got to give yourself the best chance of survival at the best place. Whether that means crawling just an extra 10 feet to the right so that way the circle... Because if you guys didn't know, the circle closes slower um, at spots that are already closer to the next white circle. Hopefully that makes sense. The farther distance the blue is from the white, the faster it will move in. So if you've got time before the blue circle starts moving to kind of inch your way through the grass closer to the um, to the side of the blue circle that's going to move slower, do it. That extra one second of less damage from the blue circle is going to save you so much health. So anyways, that is the little concept there um, that takes, it is huge application. It's a small concept that you need to be thinking about all the time. And I'm about to show you some very specific instances of using it along with some more tips of how to not die. Okay, so as you're going to see here in this footage, um, I've got two guys pushing me inside. I'm inside a single-story house here, and I do hear their footsteps. That import that's important. I hear their footsteps, and I've got a plan. I'm going to just wait on them to come in. Boom, I killed that guy. It didn't take much skill, but right here, I don't finish him off and run outside the door. I wait. I know he's got a partner, and there it goes again. Kill them both. Again, I'm not going to give myself two credit for the amount of like skill that took or anything. That was just simple mind games of knowing I killed one, we're in duos, and I heard a lot of footsteps. Where's his partner at? There he is. Boom, boom, dead. All that took was knowing which of my two guns to have in hand and knowing not to run out the front door or start looting. It's as simple as that. Not a lot of skill. More just, that's just all in the mind of them. Okay, so with this clip, I'm actually going to be recording it live as I watch it. So you'll see here me and my, I'm actually playing with my little brother here, Hayden. And we're going to be, Hayden and I are running in from the blue circle here. It is currently moving. We are currently outside the zone. So you'll see me here. We're going to start to, right here, we're running away from it. And as sucky as this is to be close to the blue circle, it's actually nice. We know we have nobody behind us at this late in the game. Only 11 people left. But even though there's only 11 people left, it's actually one of the best examples of using the, their positioning to your advantage. So even here, we choose one of the best routes we could probably think of. Sadly, there was a guy right here um, named Sketch who just happened to hear me and my brother coming up. And I'm serious. Uh, sorry to my brother. He takes the bullets here. Boom. This guy happens to see him. Gets a free kill on him. Nothing he could have done. We could not have known that guy was there. Sucks to suck. And what's funny is this sketch guy here actually is getting shot at from up the hill. But the second my brother gets shot, I, I hit the floor. We did not... When my brother died, he didn't even see this sketch guy. I never saw him. So it's best thing I can do is since I haven't got shot at yet, I know I'm in... I apparently have not been seen most likely, so I need to hit the floor. This guy somehow lives. I actually can't believe it. Whoever is shooting at him has got to have atrocious aim. Atrocious? Atrocious aim. In a, <laughs> I mean, these people, I don't know how they got to the top 11. Top 9, even. Um, but they didn't kill the sketch guy. And I'm back here, and as, as best as I can tell, you'll see in a second, I still don't know if this guy that killed my brother, I don't know where he's at. I don't know if he's ran away. So the best thing I can do is continue to crawl around and either listen for footsteps or try to get away. As much as I want to get revenge, it is stupid of me to stand up and look for the guy. I've been hearing lots of shots over there. We didn't find the guy. He has a suppressor. It was a fully automatic gun. It's a, it would be a very bad decision to stand up. So I'm going to keep my positioning here, stay low to the ground, move around, and just listen best I can. Audio is your best tool in this game. Uh, I'd say audio is almost as important as visuals. Um, it's just so important. 
So I fast forward a bit here, still scooting along the ground, haven't got shot at yet, which most likely means, I, I mean, I still haven't been spotted. There's times it's actually smart to not shoot people, which you'll actually see that in a bit, which sounds a little dumb, but even if you see somebody, do not always shoot them. Even if you can hit them, even if you can kill them. Now, right there, it's funny, I was saying don't shoot people if you have to, uh, or if you get to, but actually right there, I'll rewind it in a minute. I actually, I believe... I killed Sketch right there. So he actually, I just saw him running up the hill from, you saw him a minute ago. He got to the tree. He was running up the hill. Here we go. I'll rewind it and give me just a second here. And there we go. Sketch was running across that field and I simply took him out. Not a big deal. He was running. He didn't see me. Not a lot of skill involved, except I just got to hit my shots. So moving along here. Um, the blue circle is coming back in and I'm going to use it to my advantage one more time I actually could have ran a lot sooner, but I'm waiting as long as I can because I know I can crouch walk at the same speed This circle comes in you'll see me run along here I've got a big hill to my right So I'm not gonna get spotted from it and on my left I'm just kind of hoping there's nobody there. I haven't heard any shots from over there No one's moved towards me even though I've shot lots of people well, been shot at and shot lots of people and another thing here, see how I continue to crouch walk even though I'm in the blue circle and I don't necessarily hurry? Like, I could have taken a shorter path to get to the safety, but instead I run to the right there. That is because I know I have a ton of medical. So keep in mind, if you have lots of medical, use the blue circle to your advantage. At this point in the game, people don't expect people to be hanging out in the blue circle. I mean, only idiots do that, right? Well, sometimes they're not idiots, and I feel like it was a smart move of myself here. I had plenty of medical. Um, I knew I could get safer if I ran to that tree back there that was next to the blue. And it worked out good for me. I thought I could climb up this rock and get a better position, but sadly it was too steep. So I inch along the side here, um, and I'm looking, I'm looking. I hear a random grenade, and all that tells me is that, surprisingly, there is people over here to my left. Um, and at this point, I don't know where they're at. I hear another grenade, and of course, in free camera, you can see where they're at. But if you click on my, if, like, you know, if we were to look from my position here, nothing. I can't see a thing. As far as I know, these guys are right next to me, or they could be 100 meters away. You can throw a grenade pretty dang far. I continue to just inch around the tree looking for the guys. Even though they are moving to my right, I don't know this. I'm just looking for them. They don't know where I'm at either, except that I'm probably near them, apparently. I really don't know why they threw the grenade. One of them maybe thought they saw something, but they didn't see me because that grenade was so far off, and they're not even looking for me now. So these guys, I actually did spot him there. I saw him at that tree. So now I'm going to start moving over here. I'm like, okay, there's the guy that threw the grenade. Funny enough, I'm, I'm sneaking over here, and I know where he is. He does not know where I'm at. And you'll see the blue circle is moving right in, and right about now I spot him. Guess what? I don't shoot him yet. I don't shoot him yet. I don't shoot him yet. And now I kill him. I waited so long, because I knew if I got closer, I would have a for sure chance of killing him. For sure. And he hadn't seen me yet, so why wait? Or why shoot earlier? I can wait. Here we go. His friend's coming up. I hear him on top of me. It's another free, easy kill. He doesn't know where I'm at. Bam, bam, bam. There you go. Slam. You're dead. Simple as that. Um, took one out. The other one was on top of me. That was bad positioning on his part. When he heard his friend got killed, he shouldn't be running across the rocks looking down. Um, and he was. So he had bad positioning. I had good positioning, even though he had the upper ground. When it's as steep as that, you shouldn't be above ground like that. Now, this guy makes the worst decision I've seen in history. He is so close to the white circle, but yet for some reason, even though it's a 1v1, he has a ghillie suit, he can just lay in the grass and kill me, he decides to move away from the white circle towards the firefight where he doesn't know where I'm at exactly. And check this out. He pushes me. The ghillie guy pushes me. I'm already done looting. I hear him. I switch to this gun and it's as easy as pie. Look at that. Easy decision and you'll see it again. I'll rewind it and you'll see me actually in first person here. I hear him. I have plenty of cover. He doesn't see me. It was just a terrible positioning decision by him. I'm not, this is no skill on my part, except hitting my shots. I don't want to attribute like, oh, MLG plays, look at that 1v1. No, this dude made a terrible decision. I heard him, and I took him, I took him out on it. Here we go. I hear him, and there he goes. Simple as that. Okay, so I apologize for talking so fast, but as I'm watching these clips live, that's the best way to give you guys... Um, at the time analysis because as I watch them it brings me back to the moments I was in them and I can tell you exactly what was going through my mind as I made these decisions and these were just some examples of wins that I felt were good decision making so here we go in the next clip I'm going to be talking fast so turn your hearing up you know keep your ears keen uh, your ears peeled these are terrible phrases but I'm using them anyways here we go with the next win and I hope you guys enjoyed this one here we go so here we are and we've actually spotted these two guys way down here we're already shooting at them they're hiding behind a rock so that's all you need to know is that we know where they're at. My brother is to the right, the guy we just won the last game with. He sadly wasn't alive in the end. But they're behind this rock over here. They don't know where we're at exactly. My brother shoots him a couple times there. 
and they have an idea. They know where my brother's at, and they actually assume that I'm there. But I made the decision to kind of flank around here because guess what? Even though we could ignore these guys, I know I do not want them at our backs as this circle moves in. So here we go. They're coming over the ridge. They're shooting at my brother, and in fact, I believe they knock him out. So there we go. My brother's downed, and here we go. I have to kill these two guys. I killed the one guy right here. Quite a bad aim on my part, and I'm like, shoot, do I go revive him? No. I'm like, you know what? I need to stay. The other guy's going to kill me. So I go ahead and I finish the other guy off, you'll see here. Boom, they're dead, and I would love to get their loot. I believe one of them had a level 3 helmet, but I know. Look at that circle. It's moving in right now. Only 12 people alive. I've got to get my brother up now if I want him in this game. So I go ahead and revive him, and I'm telling you, it was a good decision, because he actually ends up getting a kill or two later on, and at least providing cover and information. So I'm glad I revived him, and it's always good to get your teammates up if it's fairly safe. And we make the call, hey, don't heal up, just be take a beeline, run for it. We do not want this circle to kill you, um, and we don't want to waste time, you know. So let's go ahead and get in the circle. And I actually spotted a guy over here at this freaking crate, and look at this. I actually decide not to shoot him, because if you can tell by the minimap, I wasn't in the circle. I move over just a couple feet. Make sure you don't go tunnel vision. You need to know whether you're in the circle or not. And I take a few shots. Sadly, I don't kill him. His health is really, really low, but I believe he had a level 3 helmet, so it must have protected him from dying. Um, and I decide I'm going to go ahead and get to a better spot before I just continue to fire at him. And you'll see in a minute, there's actually a, quite a big building to my right, and I'm really afraid there's people in it, so I've got to be careful of that. And we're in a kind of, we're actually in a bad position here. Um, even though I'm talking about good positioning, my position is risky, because if there's anybody in that building, they've now heard my shots, and they should be looking at me and honestly killing me. I got lucky. Plain and simple. This game has a lot of luck in it, too, involved, and I just got lucky that there's no one in that building. So here we go. I know the guy is in this general vicinity. I'm kind of watching for him from the hill I was just on, and he actually runs quite a bit away. He really wanted whatever was in that crate, and I never actually figured out what was in it. Um, probably nothing. I don't know. He maybe, he maybe never got to check it. I'm not too sure. He runs over here, and I don't know why he paused, but I still haven't spotted him. Right about now, I hear his footsteps. I look down. There he is. He doesn't know where I'm at. I know where he is. It's as simple as that. Free kill. I actually missed quite a few shots here. Uh, pretty bad aim on my part, but we had really good positioning. Go for the headshot, and he did have a level 3 helmet, so um, we'll go ahead and here we go, we loot him, and I believe I actually pick up his level 3 helmet, so that was a nice find, um, lucky for me. Let's go ahead and fast forward here, we actually have already seen guys in this little double story, I call it an alien house because it looks really, really weird. Um, I've shot him one time on the bottom floor, so they're actually aware of my position currently. Um, my brother clears the two houses to our left, so we actually know nobody is there, we're safe on our left. And here actually is another team pushing the guys in the alien house. He pushes up. I put one shot into him. I think maybe two. Uh, I thought I saw him, but he actually had cover behind the tree. The circle begins to move in. And it's hard decisions here because we actually have a really nice hill on our left. But sadly, we lose the cover. You'll see it in a minute. Right here, I really want these kills. I don't need them, but I will go ahead and finish this guy off because, you know, I really want the kill. Actually, my brother killed him. Um, good for you, Hayden. And... Watch this. I actually was really hoping we'd get to keep the ridge line. We don't. We have to run right over the ridge. We lose 100% of our cover, except some blades of freaking grass. We crawl forward. My brother has to, you know, we both get behind here, and our only cover actually is right here on our left. Maybe we, get, maybe we have 5% cover. Whatever. There's a nice ridge on our left protecting us from anybody over there, and there's only one guy to our uh, direction to the right there which is pretty lucky. I, I figured there was at least, I thought there was two guys, but there's actually only one that made it out. Um, and at this point, I'm kind of in a tiny dip here, um, waiting to see if anybody comes around. Okay, so now we're going to play this in first person. Um, I actually, I spot the guy at the tree in a minute here, you'll see. So I'm peeking around, trying to locate anybody, because I know in a minute we're going to have to move. I look over there, I don't see anybody, but we got to move. You see that white circle? We're way outside of it. And there he is, and it's, again, just another free kill. Um, this isn't really a gun fight, I just simply <laughs> kill him as he's about to throw his Molotov, actually, which was, that was pretty funny. You see it run, go over there to the right. And here we go, actually. Now you'll see we have this cover, but in 20-ish seconds, we're going to be having to move where we have none there is a guy over in that field and my brother actually just now gets shot by him luckily enough we have just enough time to actually heal up i said 20 -ish seconds but i think it was actually a little bit more than that um he heals up again and now we know there's a guy in that vicinity and i'm looking for him right now i don't really show you that but i'm looking for him and i can't spot him he's in a bush over there and he had a silencer so it's very very hard to locate him we both decide that we got four seconds and we got to start moving so we start crawling through here army crawling away like little snickety snakes um, sadly, there's no cover, but we're moving as best we can, making the best decision we can. We're making, making limit, when life gives you lemons, you make crappy lemonade. So life gave us some rotten lemons here, and we're trying to make the best out of it. This guy actually is looking, he's looking for us, he knows we're over here, and you'll see him in these bushes crawling around. He's really, he's actually in the white circle, lucky him. 
Ah, he's so lucky. My brother gets unlucky here. I don't really blame him for getting spotted. The guy looks for him, and you'll see him in just a second. He's going to move forward, just peeking for us. And he's making a good decision to try and find us before we find him. And right about here, he'll clearly see my brother in the grass. It's going to be a clear right there. He's getting very close. He hasn't located us yet. I'm about five yards from my brother, and right there he spots him. Boom. Easy kill. Sadly, the second I see him, the second he shoots my brother, I turn and I shoot. That's the best decision you can make. If your partner's getting a shot, and you're not, and you know there's only like a one guy over there, again, I, I made a pretty good decision to look for him. The other two guys hear my shots. Normally, I wouldn't like to get spotted here, but it's one to two, and I gotta make a decision. So I kill that guy, and right about now, I see a dark patch in the uh, field over here, and I finish his friend off. And there we go. I spot his friend over there. Easy money. So guys, I hope you enjoyed these two analysis, uh, analysis, I actually don't know what the plural form of that is, um, but me analyzing these two wins, they were really fun games, the first game I believe I had seven kills, and that second one I had eight kills by the end of it, I wish that the, you know, every time I kill somebody a giant eight kills popped up, so you guys could see it, but only I can see that in game, believe me I had eight kills, you can go back and count them I guess. Um, very fun games of just using that positioning. That last game is one of those terrible games. I was telling my brother as we played it, I was like, this is when first person kind of sucks. Everybody is crawling in wheat fields. That's the best thing you can do. There's no cover. It's so funny. We're using bushes. Um, and it's just so funny. You have to use all your, you have to use the best positioning knowledge you have. And we did. And it worked out good for us, both these games. It won't always work out for you. And when you know your death was 100% due to positioning and it wasn't your fault, like you did the best you can, it's a little easier to swallow that loss and just think to yourself, well, there's nothing I could have done there. Let's move on. And just know to yourself, if you constantly, every single game, are making the best positioning you can out of where you are, you will win way more games. Don't always go for those aggressive plays unless you're just trying to get better at your aiming. If you're trying to die less and you're trying to get to the end and still get good kills while you're at it, I mean, you guys saw here, we were playing fairly passive, except at the beginning there. Um, and I still came out with eight kills, and that's a very high killing game. Um, it's higher than average for sure. And so that's pretty cool, um, even playing slightly passive. So don't think that playing like this is going to get you no kills. Um, it only gets you no kills if you miss your shots. So that's that. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to drop a like if you liked it. Drop a comment if you have any suggestions, tips of yourself, or anything else you want to say. And subscribe for more PUBG content. I hope to see all of you in my next live stream or video. See you guys later.